What happens in the sky affects life down here on Earth. The celestial compass shows you how and guides your way with astrology you can use from professional astrologer Kathy Beale. Every episode features her light-hearted practical forecasts and navigational tips, blended with humor, optimism, and a love of patterns, symbolism, and pop culture references. Kathy translates technicalities into concepts that apply to real life. You'll learn how the current moment ties to where we've been, from the recent past to cycles that last happened years ago, and get a look at where we're heading. And much more, from special topics to special guests. The Celestial Compass. Enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Here's your host, Kathy Beale. Greetings, Earthlings. This is Kathy Beale of EmpowermentUnlimited.net, your host of Celestial Compass. And today we will, in a minute, be having a what I expect will be a lively conversation with best-selling authors Monty Farber and Amy Zerner. But first, a very quick update on the astrological weather for the end of April 2021. Uh, you have perhaps noticed that the air is just a bit uncomfortable and the Rest of the month is brought to you by the cosmic change agents Uranus and Pluto. Uranus is particularly active this week, so be on the lookout for plot twists, breakthroughs, surprises for things that used to be, bring you creature comforts, suddenly not feeling quite right for your grip on certain things to just open up. Even as the sky is moving much more into an emphasis in the sign of Taurus, which is the first uh, grounded, slow, sensual, physical earth sign. Uh, Uranus is sending his lightning bolts into our relationships and our desires and our attitude about money and into our minds. So you may have a you may have a mental epiphany, lightning going off, a relationship switching into something quite different than you thought. Many of the surprises will be good. They will all be liberating. Next week, the other cosmic change agent, Pluto, the agent of unavoidable change, rules the Scorpio full moon, and he comes in as the cleanup guy. Uh, a full moon always brings emotional intensity and the opportunity to purge and release. And with the Scorpio full moon, it like, goes a hundred times and uh, so you may find a lot of uncomfortable truths coming up. You may hit the end of the line. You may decide to pull the plug on a lot of things. And you may simply find yourself cleaning out your dresser drawers, the kitchen, whatever. That would be one very uh, productive way of dealing with the energy. And then we have one last zap by Uranus and your concept of yourself opens up. You may be very pleasantly surprised. So for more about this, go back to my forecast for the month of April. And by this weekend, there will also be my forecast for the Scorpio full moon. And they're up at omtimes.com and my own site, empowermentunlimited.net. And now for the fun. Uh, we are joined today by best-selling authors Monty Farber and Amy Zerner. Uh, since 1988, this husband and wife team has created their family of best-selling spiritual tools, metaphysical books, and oracles that help you navigate your life path. There are nearly 3 million copies of their works in print in 18 languages. Some of their popular titles are Karma Cards, Signs and Seasons, an astrology cookbook, Sun Sign Secrets, and Astrology for Wellness. And they're here to talk with us about their newest title, Mindful Astrology, Finding Peace of Mind According to Your Sun, Moon, and Rising Signs. Um, these... And especially the combination of how they work together, your sun, which most people are familiar with, the moon sign, which represents your emotional intelligence, and the rising sign, which shows how you appear to other people. Um, welcome, Amy and Monty. 
Thank you, Thank Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. So glad to be here. I love your forecast. I do have to clean my drawers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> my house could use that, too. Um, before we talk about your book, could you please tell us a bit about how your astro- your involvement in astrology began? And uh, I understand that's part of your own backstory as a couple, right? It is indeed. I, I was studying astrology way back in 1971. I was in art school in New York, and one of my painting teachers uh, did my chart and my roommate's chart. Of course, we were awestruck because we had thought, you know, it's just what you read in the paper, but we saw how deeply psychological it was. And it turned out his um, wife was giving astrology classes in Soho in New York, and I started taking the classes because I got hooked immediately. And as I was studying, I, I met Monty in 1974. And I was studying Amy, so I learned astrology. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, as you know, it's a lifelong study, and so oh, yeah. you know that's that's where it began, and, yeah, and uh, from onward, you know, we we've, we've done books about it and thousands of readings, and you know, it's a fascinating language of psychology, which is what I I love about it. And before I had met Amy, I, I had thought it was all nonsense, so I'm, I never feel odd if somebody doesn't understand it because I remember the days that I didn't understand it. I think that's why I've sort of made it my mission to help people under, get in. If they're interested, I have an explanation that will make sense to them. And that, that's where Karma Cards came from, and that launched our career as authors. What's wonderful now is so many people do know their charts and are willing to you know, spend time studying it more than they used I'm- to. That's very, very true. Uh, I'm from the background where you had to keep it on the down low or you might be set fire to. You can tell what part of the country I grew up in. And uh, (laughs) so I find this just fascinating. And now it's all over creation. But um, what inspired the book Mindful Astrology? Because you have written about astrology from a number of angles before. Um, Wellness Tips, Astrology for Wellness, The Astrological Cookbook, Sunside Secrets. How, what inspired you to say, okay, now we're going to go at it from this angle? Well, it's, it's great to be talking to you because you're an astrologer, so you know how important the, the rising sign is. And I originally proposed it as a book exclusively on rising signs. But, but sometimes with publishers, it becomes a collaborative project (laughs) and they said we we said we want they said we want this book to have more which they were right and they wanted it to be more than rising signs and we realized sometimes people don't have 30 40 years to study like we all did so they want to you know really get something deep and meaty but not maybe have to spend so you can really get your chart for free online and start looking up yourself, your friends, your family in this book, and you'll know a whole lot about a person. Because those three things, we call them the three big aspects of astrology. We call them the Celestial Trilogy, which works per- perfectly with the name of your show. I love the name of your show. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I you did know, think it up. Used to, uh, no, it's great. My friends used to call me the Celestial Mechanic. I used to know how like to fix that. cars when you can still fix cars. Because it really is, astrology really is a compass that helps you navigate your life. And knowing if you meet somebody and you know their sun, moon, and rising sign, you can really know their core and their essence and why they're appearing the way they are and what they might be feeling. And you can really cut to the chase. Otherwise, it might take you you know, four or five years to to know that much about them. And, and for parents, it's so good to know your child's rising sign because the rising sign is how you appear to other people, and not knowing it is like getting dressed in the dark and, and going outside and wondering, why do people look at me like that? And, and, and so they can know a little bit more about their kids. If you know your kid's a Scorpio rising, that's a lot right <laughs> As you know, that's a lot right there. Amy's a Scorpio That's rising, a lot right there. It, yeah. And I, I did... Yeah, I found it. I haven't run across anyone who has phrased it in terms of this is how people view you. I mean, I've always thought the rising sign is your social persona. It's a little box that you stick your being through to interact with the rest of the world. But to say that, that this is how people perceive you 
and that if you're getting certain um, reactions yeah. that yeah no go, go ahead go I think, ahead i was just going to say we're saying the same thing um it, it's just a different way of of saying it but 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 i also find that when people start thinking it that way it, they understand it a lot better. I mean, if you're born at sunrise, you're a double whatever, so what they see is what they get. But there's 11 other signs that might be coming up on the horizon when you're born. I mean, another way to put it is to say this is how you've chosen to project yourself into reality. Right. Because as a fashion designer, which is another thing that I do, I see how people dress in terms of the rising sign, the colors they choose to wear, how they groom themselves, how they carry themselves, their gait and their stride. It's all reflected in the rising sign. Yes, absolutely. And when I was first learning astrology, I found myself just kind of staring at people and figuring out what they were. (laughs) That happens, right? You just want to know everybody. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, We once went to an astrology convention, and instead of, hello, my name is Monty, they had little stickers for you to put on that said your planet, your sun, moon, and rising sign. It was so much fun. And then when you went that, out in the outside world, you wanted everyone to have that on. Right. <laughs> I'm I always seeing ask people kind of like, if they know. Sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead, Amy. I, I always ask people, first of all, even if you just know their sun sign, it tells you a lot. But if they know those three things about themselves, it, it, you can really have a great conversation and, uh, understand where they're coming from. Now, in your book, you use the analogy of a movie projector for the interaction of the sun, moon, and rising sign. Can you elaborate on that? Explain it to people. Well, for those for the younger people, there used to be this thing when you go to <laughs> there used to be this thing called a movie theater, and they had something called a movie projector, and a film would move in front of a very bright light, and inside the bright the projector had this bright light that would then get uh, reflected onto, onto a curved mirror and then shot out through the lens, just like what you said before about the rising sign, that, that energy getting shot out through that lens. The rising sign is the color of the lens that it gets shot out through. That's what people see, and it's, it's what they see on that lens. The moon is that curved mirror, and the, the bright light is the sun. So you have your purpose reflected off your emotional intelligence, and shot out through your rising sign. And what it does is it creates a portrait of you. You blend all those three things together, and you come up with the human that you are. Right. Which you do in an interesting way in this book. A lot of books that would approach something like this are more of a a cookbook where the information is just disconnected, but it seemed to me that you actually weave it all together. You start with the personality as the the sun as the foundation, and then you weave in how the moon works with that, and then you weave in how the rising sign works with those two. Yes. Not surprising okay, given that you work in fabrics. <laughs> yes, it's all a tapestry. Well, that, that was a great description of what we tried to do with the book. I'm, I'm, I would be surprised if you didn't get it, but you certainly got it. Yep. Well, please use it. <laughs> so, but let's 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 um, let's separate it for just a tiny bit. Um, the sun sign information is pretty. It's consistently structured. You talk about love and relationships, work and career, wealth and success. Uh, wellness and mindfulness for each sign so that the same the same quality or the same sort of information is available for each sign and that's how you set the the basis for it i i specifically like that the wellness box includes physical tips um that are different, really different, depending on what the sign is. Uh, the mudra pose for Libra, aromatherapy for Scorpio. Because yeah, well, that you. one well, especially, because that we, gets we, around the conscious mind. Yes, we've been practicing wellness and mindfulness for so many years that we've been together. We've been together 47 years. And, um, you know, in, in terms of finding ways to heal ourselves and you have to be interested in people if you're an astrologer, right? So, so hearing everyone's stories and problems and difficulties and ways to overcome, we've really practiced what we preach in terms of wellness, and it is very specific for each 
each sign what they're drawn to or what would work for them, and it won't, might not work for another type of personality. So we we love sharing that because they're simple things that are very effective. Yeah, and we like people. Like, like Amy was saying, if you're going to do people's charts, you better like them or else you're not going to get very many repeat business. <laughs> Um, and, and we know how hard it is to live. We've done a lot of different things in our life. We do a lot of different things now. So we don't just sit in the rarefied air of astrology. We think it's where the rubber meets the road and, and, and where you have to – like, I love it that your description of your show is about how you navigate because that's what this is all about. How do you navigate through your day? And we, we know that, the, as you know from reading people, that what do they want to know about love, money? money career and health which and, wellness is health and now everybody wants to know about moving after being locked <laughs> down for a year it's very true <laughs> the questions really <laughs> have have honed in well we're 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 uh inching up toward the first break and i want to uh alert listeners to the fact that we will be taking a few callers um, and just in case the number is not visible um, on the show page, I will be, I will have the number for you at the beginning of the next section. So we're going to take a pause here. And uh, I do ask that callers will take questions about your own celestial trilogy, your sun, moon, and rising signs. Talk to you again in a minute. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Life is a flow, and enlightenment is simply harmonizing with the way life really is. Then you find that life is effortless, benevolent, and free of all suffering. Hey everyone, this is G.P. Walsh, and I want to invite you to my brand new radio show that's launching right here on Home Times Radio called The Flow of Enlightenment. I've been a spiritual teacher for decades, and my greatest pleasure is being able to share with you these deep and highly practical spiritual ideas. So join me in The Flow every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, and let yourself be transformed. Want help with your own celestial compass? Visit my site, empowermentunlimited.net, for Astro Insight forecasts for each week, month, and new and full moon. Want to explore the personal impact? Make a decision? Understand another person? <laughs> it is possible. Click the Services tab to book a personal session with me. That address again, empowermentunlimited.net. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back to Celestial Compass. This is your host, Kathy Beal, and today we are talking to Monty Farmer at Farber, I'm sorry, I know your name, and Amy Zerner, and we will be talking to a few callers about your own celestial trilogy, the combination of your sun, moon, and rising sign, and the number to call in is 202-570-7057, 202 570 I did find there's there there is sometimes I mean people say that 
sun sign astrology is just overly general, but I, I have to admit that there were moments in reading your extensive pages on each sun sign that I I broke into a smile or actually laughed as I recognized a description <laughs> that actually and and I have to mention the Aquarius discussion used one of my pet phrases. I am, in fact, a uh, an Aquarius. Concern about throwing the baby out with the bathwater. That is something that runs <laughs> has run through my mind. How did you get that? <laughs> well, Mark is an Aquarius. Yeah, I'm an Aquarius. I've <laughs> been there, yes, done that. <laughs> well, it's not surprising that Aquarians love astrology because astrology is really ruled by Uranus, and I guess... That energy in the air now makes so many people interested in astrology now. But you can tell so much about a person's sun sign if it's well written, like well, <laughs> like you. some books. <laughs> we love to compliment ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, what else are you, Kathy? What's your rising? Is there any Leo on this call? Uh, my my, yeah. my <laughs> rising, yeah, my rising is Pisces, and my moon is Leo. Oh. Anything sound familiar here, Monty? <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a Leo rising, so you're an Aquarius sun and and, and uh, uh, a Leo moon. I'm a, a Leo rising and Aquarius sun. With a yeah, with a moon in Pisces, moon. and she's Pisces rising. It's a lot similar. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. practically uh, brother and sister. <laughs> mm-hmm. Except I'm a she's full moon baby, so <laughs> I could be a little Me crazier too. than you, I bet. Uh huh. Well, Amy is a full, Amy I'm is full, a full moon baby. We can see other sides of things. Forever, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, and being born on the full moon is is a special gift. I always think. Well, but that, I'm, that's because I'm in love with someone who has it. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, I tell so, you, uh, astro- astrology is so useful. That's the thing that that motivates me to keep going, keep going, keep going. You know, try and explore every aspect of astrology from a basic learning level that I can, because I know it's going to change people's lives. We have people coming up to us. And saying, you know, your book was uh, the first book my mother ever gave me on astrology or tarot, or you know, because Amy's enchanted tarot. You have the original one you were telling us, and I and do. Just affect. Once you know astrology, you can help other people. It's such a beautiful thing. And see how unique we all are. You know, I, I think for some reason in this age of Aquarius that we're in now. There seems to be an emphasis that we should all think alike or all do alike. I don't know where that came from. But um, what I love about astrology is that it really describes our uniqueness. And then you can put yourself in someone else's shoes, even if you aren't like them, but you can understand who they are as their own unique person. And, and having mindful astrology, you read it, and then they should book a reading with you because once you, you know a little bit more, it makes the readings you get from, from a competent reader like yourself that much more valuable because but, you understand what's being said. I'm sure you tell your uh, listeners this, but um, to get a chart done, you have to know your exact time of birth. It helps. And the place of birth. And that, that's the information you can feed into um, a free astrology chart site, which we like Astrolabe or what other sites. Uh, Astrograph. And it does, it prints it out in English. It says your rising sign is this, your sun sign it's is free. this, and your moon is this. And, and, you know, mm-hmm. the Internet is so great that way, right? I mean, that's it's handy to start to get to know those three things, and then you can go deeper if you want to to study aspects and transits. And um, as you know, you can go forever. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've spent a lot of money at astrological conferences and thought, okay, now I'm going to learn this. Well, uh there's a limit to how much your life can deal with. Um, anyway, backtracking to your <laughs> backtracking to your book. Um, as I as I the 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 bulk of the info. Well, there's a lot of information as a foundation about the sun sign, and then you introduce the concept of the moon sign, and you start by immediately uh, out addressing how each moon sign interacts with the sun by element, and then you give information by the moon sign. Um, yes. So. How did you just, I mean, anything you want to say about how you worked the moon sign in with the sun sign? I guess it's just, you know, talent and years of practice. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Okay. (laughs) And the moon, I mean, the moon sign, yeah. 
Go, would you talk no, a little bit about say, what that shows about someone, the, the moon? The moon is your emotional intelligence. Sorry, I'm, I'm on a Leo rising, so you know, you know what Leo rising stage fright is. We get scared when we're not on stage. So that's why I'm trying to, trying to be a little funny. But, but I, we, we've done, I've done thousands of readings. Amy's done thousands of readings. And we just put everything we know about how your emotional intelligence which is the moon works with your purpose. Which is your feelings and your moods and sometimes, you know, your subconscious things that maybe you can't articulate as well. And when you have, when you know the quality, if your moon's an air sign or fire sign, that already tells you a lot about it. And then you can get more specific how it can work with your sun sign. Like you were, you were saying you were born in a full moon, so your moon's opposite your sun sign. So sometimes... You, you have an intense awareness of what's going on with you and other people. Right, exactly. Other people have their moon conjunct, maybe, right next to their sun, which means it's in the same sign. And they would be like, if it's in, both in Virgo, they're extra Virgo. Right, right. But it, it's like cooking, mm-hmm. right? It's like a, yeah. a blending. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, very much so. And, and the moon, the moon shows what your what a person's definition of nurturing is like how how they recognize yeah. something uh, some people might call it love language i guess that it's what they need in order to feel safe and secure and how they yep. experience so someone might present one way uh, and then you find out their moon sign and you see oh this explains a lot like a lot of people are kind of gushy on the inside that don't show it when you yes, like them. absolutely. Or they cry easily, and maybe if you're not that kind of person, it might seem strange to you. Or some people might, maybe if they have Moon and Aquarius, they're a little more analytical and don't show their emotions at all. Right. And and then if you're a Capricorn rising, and you have a Capricorn rising child, a lot of times those kids get loaded up with responsibilities because they appear so competent and and you know. Ta- uh, taciturn and they don't complain and, and the next thing you know they're going to a psychiatrist trying to figure out why did i was overburdened and i don't know how to relax and knowing the rising sign and the moon sign and the sun sign together it, it just gives you three layers of yourself instead of just one like the and sun. of another person mm-hmm. so instead of just saying all oh, that person's crazy you know maybe you can take some time and understand <laughs> their particular um you know celestial trilogy which will describe them well, that was the alternate title for the book. Everyone's crazy. <laughs> Your celestial trilogy might explain it. <laughs> now, when the uh, a baby all right. is born, you, you, when a baby is born, you can see their chart right away, and yeah. and their personality is is right there. And as a parent, it can help you to understand this child's different than that child. You know, if they have a sibling, it can be very, very different. And maybe you're way you're going to raise them and care for them can be very different too right and, and you know, if your charts yeah. are confrontational to each other that's a good thing to know right off the bat oh absolutely to see where the areas <laughs> of conflict are going to be um circling back briefly to the rising sign and then we do have a caller so i'm gonna we will take the caller in a second uh, when in your description of the rising sign which you discussed third you talk about basic traits, physical appearance, positive and negative personality traits, and then you actually mention for each sign specific reactions that sign might encounter from other people that yes. gives information about how you're being perceived, and then you give advice on adjusting it when you get that, which I find yes. a fascinating and useful way of doing it. I do notice that you use the language dial it down for many of the signs, but for Scorpio and Pisces, you change it to become aware of. <laughs> I don't, I don't want that the Scorpios to... getting mad at me. I'm Scorpio rising, and I, I know from my years of, of seeing how it, it uh, manifests you know, that I'm often misunderstood, but sometimes I can use that as a tool, and sometimes I can take the time to explain myself a little better. Uh, you know, so that doesn't happen. It certainly explains why no one's ever messed with Amy her whole life. <laughs> Scorpio rising. <laughs> no one in their right mind. Right, uh, right, right, yeah. Exactly. And, and, right. and Pisces rising, like yourself, 
I mean, that's the most sensitive of, of, of the rising signs. And so, and, and of course, it makes you appear psychic and dreamy and, and connected. Or if something's wrong, sometimes people might think there's something wrong and you're just, you know, being in your psychic um, head, you know, with the Aquarian brain working. But meanwhile, God has helped anybody who tries to push you around with you have that Leo Aquarius thing because you're actually quite fixed and, you're, and stubborn and all the good stuff. You think? Well, that's the other thing that we uh, we didn't bring up, but, you know, you can have a lot of fixed planets, which make you stubborn, or a lot of mutable planets that make you change your mind and be a little more moody or cardinal. I have a lot of cardinal energy, which makes me very goal-oriented. So that's another um, sort of coloration of of this trilogy that you can look at. Plus, it's fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Well, I agree with that. Um, let's... Before the break, let's take uh, – do we have Noreen from Florida still with us? Are you still hanging in, Noreen? I'm here. Hey, Hi. Noreen. What would you like to – what would you like to ask? Um. Okay. I've done a little bit of astrology for myself. I have a Leo sun, Leo okay. rising, and a Scorpio well, moon. What can well, you tell me about me that- <laughs> I'm not, I can tell you right now, I'm not messing with you. <laughs> okay. But, uh, I, I would tell you that you would need a lot of attention and that you are uh, able to be very generous and give a lot of attention with all that Leo going on. But if somebody messes with you, you know, with that Scorpio, you'll get them. Right. My sister has moon in Scorpio. She will have her revenge on me if I screw up. <laughs> but the double Leo, um, you know, think Mick Jagger. That's that's the consummate performer. And, okay. and You're probably a very entertaining person. Yeah, when you walk in the room, everybody turns around. I mean, and that's just yeah, little stuff. I'm, yeah, but I'm going to say I'm more off to the side where I don't put myself out on stage. Well, well, that's, that's a Scorpio, Scorpio part. Scorpio moon. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, because uh, the, your emotional intelligence, you feel secure. You know, think about Scorpions. They hang under the rock, and and, and they're less. You come out when you want to. And and right. remember, Venus, uh, Mercury is never more than 30 degrees from the sun, and Venus is never more than 60 degrees from the sun. So you could have, like, Venus and Virgo, which would, would definitely tone it down. But a double Leo. You're not an introvert, I wouldn't say. But here's the here's the thing about the rising sign, Noreen, is that uh-huh. other people see you that way. You might not see yourself that way, but other people see you as quite flamboyant, I would imagine. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's and the I, thing I, with the I rising sign. Is, it doesn't matter what we think. The, the <laughs> rising signs it comes across anyway. Yeah, the rising signs the twenty four seven thing. It's out there. You know, you can be thinking about. Uh, did I leave the water running? And, and everyone's like, God, she's having the best time ever. <laughs> and nobody ever feels sorry. Nobody ever feels sorry for Leo Rising. I have to tell you, I have a lot of friends who are doctors. I could walk in with an arrow through my head. They'd be, oh, you'll be fine. Just, you know, go to sleep. You'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> well, thank Anybody you. with uh, any kind of Scorpio, you know, whether it's your moon or your rising or your sun, they're the detectives of, of the Zodiac. Yeah. So um, they're the researchers. They they find out things that might be hidden from other people. Right. Mm. That it's makes powerful. sense. powerful. Yeah. You have a very powerful combination. Yeah. I've, I've realized <laughs> I don't think that. I've ever done a chart of them, or certainly not in a long time. I don't think I've ever done it. Well, we're going to we're gonna have to, to get that together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, yeah well, I, I, I just like Nancy. to throw it. She's pretty good. Well, thank you. And I would just like to throw in, uh, Noreen, that sometimes a really heavy Leo um, influence can come, can be very quietly proud. Mm-hmm. I have known some Leo Risings who just sit there with, I don't have to do anything because I'm here. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, a solidness and there, it can be quiet. There's not always the people who are doing the song and dance saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, because you just kind <laughs> right. of you, well, you right. can just right. command it. Yeah, like, like, the, like the cat, that's the symbol. So let me ask a question yes. then. The Leo sun is at 29 degrees. Well, I've found that the last and the first degree of a sign is the strongest. They have to be the border okay. guards to, dif- to differentiate. Okay. So it's, it's not like you're a... Uh, uh, 
a weakened Leo Sun. Uh, quite the opposite, actually. I, I think I okay. think what Kathy said makes perfect sense because when you think about at least the male lion just sitting there and the females do all the work and bring the food to yeah. them. And, right. Yeah, they, that's quiet confidence if ever there was one. <laughs> mm. Absolutely. Yeah. See how much thank fun you. this is? Yeah, thank you for thank you for calling in. No, oh, thank you. It's great. Perfect. Thank you. It's our pleasure. All Thanks. right. We, we love doing this. <laughs> We do have one other caller, and I'm going to wait to pull her in until after the break. It is actually someone I know. Um, before We've got like a minute and a half before the break, and I will um, – oh, can you talk – anything at all about – anything more about, about rising signs, since that's what people see, and often the rising sign can – can, well, it can often, I have found, be an absolute shield to what's really going on with the moon. Yes, I mean, and, and lots of times we have to make the attempt to look deeper into the person, not just be thrown at, off, but, you know, be immediately judgmental, because there's always a lot under the surface. Yeah, I love the way you look at things, Kathy. I, I, I think you should write a book. You have a, you have a great way of looking at it. I have a good this. title, A Celestial Compass. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have quite a backlog. <laughs> I have well, one I, mean, I have one I have one coming out now that's my food writing called Eat, Drink and Be Wary. So believe me, I have a lot of astrology ones coming it. down the pike. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Oh my god. Thank you. Yeah, I'll send you guys stuff about it. I think you'll you'll love the design. Anyway, we're coming up into the next break. And uh, for anybody else, we have one other caller. Um, if you'd like to get in line to talk, 202-570-7057. We're taking calls discussing your celestial compass, your sun rising and uh, moon signs. And we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. How would you like navigational tools you can use on your own? Visit my site, empowermentunlimited.net, and click the Shop tab. There you'll find lots of talks and guides explaining the big influences at work now, like Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus, You'll also find a variety of guided visualizations for relaxing, clearing your energy, or getting to know planetary archetypes. That address again, empowermentunlimited.net. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. If I could be you, and you could be me, for just one hour, if you could find a way to get inside each other's mind, walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my shoes, we've all felt left out, and for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org, brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to Celestial Compass. We are talking today with Monty Farber and Amy Zerner about their new book, Mindful Astrology. Um, and I 
we've been also talking about why it's so useful to understand someone's combination of their sun sign, their moon sign, and their rising sign. And uh, I'm just going to throw in a little self-revealing uh, confession here. Of one, In one of my early astrology classes, there was learning one particular fact about one of my students changed my, I mean, classmates, changed my opinion of her from, oh my God, you are so slow. This is, you are a useless human. I mean, I was extraordinarily <laughs> judgmental to, oh, that's the way you are. So I have found that, I hope I have evolved beyond that, but I, I have found that knowing this level of information really does make you give people slack and it, and approach them on their own terms rather than your way of viewing reality. And that sounds very much like what you're facilitating with this book and this approach. Well, you understand that diversity makes you truly tolerant, I mean, which is what we all should be. Right. And we, of course, we all have our judgments, especially if we have a lot of Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I have Pluto on my ascendant. But, but you know, the thing is, is that we're, we're here, our sun sign, our moon sign, our rising sign, our whole chart, we're here to, to make it work. We're here to learn about all that stuff. You don't come in as a full-blown Aquarius where you got being different and new and exciting and, and futuristic down pat. You're here with that kind of combination because you're, you're here to learn about it. And that, that's the, the approach hope, we take yeah, in the book. Hopefully you can evolve, with, which is what, also why we're here. Yeah. I, and a lot of times relationships have a problem because the people – you know, you either grow together or you grow apart. And and with like you said at the beginning of the show, with Amy and I, it was our language of love, astrology, and and it just thinking about life on the same wavelength helped us to have this you know, this nice, wonderful relationship that we have. And you can understand the cycle that um, your partner is going through or your friend is going through, and you can really share so much intimacy when you understand the person's astrology. I love the fact that you're talking on, on the uh, the introduction for the show and for the ads for the show about Saturn and Uranus, because that's a big deal to astrologers, and, and you're honoring your listeners by, by sharing that information with them. You're not, you're not standing there going, well, they just want to know about sun sign and love, and, and who, am I going to meet someone at a bar? You're giving them the, the, the power. Real, the real shit, as yeah, we say. Yeah, the, it's pretty... It's pretty <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, my I, I, north I, node's in Sagittarius, so. <laughs> right, right. So for for those of you out there who don't know astrology, Sagittarius tell the truth whether they want to or not. <laughs> so you're getting the, you're getting the truth from Kathy. I mean, and, and Sag, usually right? with a joke. Um, well, that's well, so, yeah, because life is hard, and we all have to entertain each other. And this actually leads to our next caller, in a way, uh, Julie from Wisconsin. Are you with us? I'm with you all the way. <laughs> I thought so. Uh, that's so sweet. Well, oh, no. Julie, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> Let me guess. Oh, you guys know each okay, other, right? So. Yeah. We so know each other. Your, so, tell us your celestial trilogy and we can get to know you too. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to tell you one thing real quick. I loved your statement about 29 degree and one degree, one degree being the, like the border guard. Yeah, so thank you. That hooked me, and now I have to buy your book, and I swore I wasn't going to buy another book because <laughs> I have a trillion. Um, but I'm going to have to get it now. Um, thank you. It, <laughs> ma it makes a great gift because it's, it's being... It's very pretty. It's very illustrated. And yeah, I know I saw hard, it. I'm not it's giving a hard it away. Okay. <laughs> I'm not giving it away. No. <laughs> yeah, it's being it's being published by uh, Rock Point of uh, Division of Quarter, which is their gift book division. So it's meant it's, it's meant to be given away. Okay, so a couple of things. What one of the things that you guys talked about, knowing how people are wired, et cetera. Yes. And yes. I just had an aha the other day, and realizing that uh, a person that I know whose son is in Aries. We don't know her husband's chart because he was born in an elevator. I don't know his moon. Um, an elevator, did you say? Yeah. Yep, she did. I did. <laughs> oh, I've got really stories, awesome. you know. 
And but the interesting thing is that she always irritates me because she would say we and us and Pete and I and then Pete would look and like you knew he didn't have a clue what she was talking about. And <laughs> one said she said, can we borrow your chainsaws? Because I was getting rid of them because my husband is fast and I'm not going to use the chainsaw. She said, can we borrow them? So I took them over. She said, I said, are you going to get them out of the carpet? And he goes, what? I said, the chainsaws. And he looked. <laughs> and she had said, bring the chainsaws over for Pete to use. Pete had no idea. But what well, I happened. I would call the police at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to drive this toward the astrology here, right, Julie? <laughs> I'm going to go to the astrology. I, don't say anything uh, bad about Aries, because I'm an Aries. As a, as a policeman, I, son, really I, I would have been on the but phone I, already. No, but I'm going to say <laughs> that it is the relationship between her son and his moon. Yeah, I bet you're if, if, Yeah, because if it's a harmonious relationship... Then that, it is. friends. That, that, yeah. That, but but they don't necessarily talk to each other. Sounds like. Oh, no. no. <laughs> well, sometimes they, they only call them bringing in the Sag- <laughs> What you said about the Sagittarian I'm bringing in is that I call her on it because, you know, Sag tells the truth. For sure. And, and so that was a few ripples of fast talking in our relationship as friends. And, uh, but when she did things like that, it registered with me as a lie, as, as not a truth, not being truthful and honest. When she oh. says we and us, and he's totally clueless. But, so now, recent, now I go, aha, okay. Which is getting to the astrology of it. That's how okay. their relationship works. That's how they're wired. Um, right. So, so if you don't so, mind me asking, what's your what's your son? What's your stuff? Your I'm telling you, you can't guess. You can't guess. My my ascending ten degrees Sag first house. Okay. My son fifteen degrees Sag first house. My moon thirteen degrees sandwich between ascending and sun. Gemini seventh house. Wow. Wow. And so you're another, another couple, moon opposite sun. A couple of moments before an eclipse. Oh, that's interesting. So are, so are you a teacher? That's what everyone says. Psychic people well, you, hate me you, and they you've say... You've told me a few things already <laughs> today. <laughs> so, so if you're born near an eclipse, that means either the north or the south node is in your first house, right? South node. South node. North node. So it's a, yeah, so it's a, it's a, so it's North node with your partner. I'm sorry to hear that that your um, your husband passed, but the South node, the he first did. house, means this is this is a karmic lifetime for you, right? You're right. I mean, you're you're philosopher, communicator, just what you presented to us in this short period of time is mm-hmm. right. You, you were able to explain a relationship really fast, which is not easy to do. Yeah, let's ask Kathy. It's most unusual for me to do it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. I love the fact that you two are friends because I, that gives such a nice quality to the whole conversation. Uh, he's a when we wrote this wolf. book, Kathy, when we wrote this book, we thought of all of our friends because um, how do you get to know astrology? Really, it's through you know people close to you. So we would think, oh, Virgo, oh, that's that's Eric, you know, and our friend Scorpio. This is how she manifests this and that. And so our whole families and friends, they're all in this book in a different way. It's family tested. It's like a, it's like a cookbook. We went in the kitchen and nobody dies. <laughs> I know. It's, that's, that's the great thing about astrology. They have no idea of how much you're learning about them when you ask them, could, could you do their chart? Um, yes, that's true. That's true. They're giving so, up, they're giving up some serious personal information. <laughs> Forget about they Facebook. Are. They are. 
So I, I, how do you read this ascending sun moon? What is what is your perspective on it? On the sun moon having sun moon and uh, in uh, conjunct and stag? Yeah, and the ascending right there. Blunt. Yeah, exactly. Wait, but wait, wait a minute. What, what was in the seventh house? You, you, you said you had something in Gemini. That was the moon, right? Oh, the moon. Yeah. So you had the moon. Yeah. So it's the sun. Anyone who's born at sunrise is a double. So being a double Sag is, if I want to know the truth, I'm going to you, and if I don't go to you, you'll come to me with the truth. <laughs> you know, because Sages are always on. I the would moon. say you like the color purple. You'd say I'd like it. I went through a purple. I went through a phase of purple. I'm telling her. <laughs> and then I I'm went sorry. to orange. I, I moved to orange. Yeah, which orange I found and purple would be perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, I switched from purple, and now I'm. Purple was just too fatty right now. Too many well, people are. Yeah, well, that's because yeah. Amy's had purple purple hair since the seventies. So <laughs> oh, how cool! It comes that and goes. So cool. yeah. I haven't had the nerve to do it. Um, well, she so, does a real subtle well, thing about it. <laughs> so, well, you can so, see colors. Colors are easy to see with rising signs. And we give you that to you in the book too. We try and throw <laughs> everything in there. We try and make every one of our books that we've done, and we've done over fifty of them. Uh, we try to make it so that if you go on a desert island, you'll be able to use that book to know everything there is to know about, <laughs> about the, life. About that one, yes, so, life and that one subject. Okay. Tell me more about what you see in my chart because it is all about me. <laughs> Actually, I was talking. I can't Julie, tell if it's Kathy or... No, no, no that, was, that, was, that was Julie. Julie, we do have one other uh, caller. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Julie. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I just wanted to see what you said about the Gemini, but you know, I know that one kind of. Moon and you have Gemini an active, means, mo- uh, active mind. And Moon and Gemini means your emotions. You never have just one. There's always you'd always feel two ways about everything. And your friends have to understand that. Really, exactly. I'm glad we. Yeah. You- I yeah, say you're an you. avid reader, but you already said that. That so you yeah. have a lot of books. Yeah. But. Right, we're not, we're not yeah. cheating. And I'm going to ask you more. <laughs> Apparently, I'm adding more to my set. And you have, oh, it was you. a delight talking to you and meeting you. I adore well, Kathy. Pleasure. And I agree she should write a book about astrology. And I'm looking forward to, to reading yours. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Bye. Bye, and Kathy. Real- Bye. We'll talk soon. Uh, real quick, we have Pauline from New York. Hi, guys. This has to be I'm really the crazy room. lady that called you from, you know, another show. Um, when I asked you a lot of, like, advanced questions. Um, well, oh. I actually looked at you guys' website. I really love Amy's, oh, my gosh, her clothing line. <gasps> Beautiful. Oh, Someday I'm going to afford that, and I'm going to go to you. But um, oh, quick question. Yeah, yeah. I really want, I know that uh, Monty knew the answer, and I wanted to hear his, because like I said, I couldn't find anybody to give me this. Uh, it's an E next with a, a small case Q symbol. You said something about Eastern something or other? What, do you mean the East point of a chart? Yeah, that's maybe, I don't know what it stands for. It's in my chart, and I was like, I've never seen that symbol, and I couldn't find anybody or anywhere to get that info. Where so is I it in your chart? Um, my my friend's is a serial chart, and he gave me, and it has an E and then a Q, small case Q next to it. And it's in the 12th house in Cancer. And I'm trying to figure out what the hell that is for well, the longest I'm time. Not a, I'm not a sidereal. Astrologer. I know, I know. I didn't know if this only has to do with sidereal or this is something with all, you know, it's an astrology symbol. I just couldn't, no, you know. No, it's not, it's not in the charts that... that uh, okay. Then, um, since I heard you, uh, the lady before me, ask a question about couples, I, I know you don't need, I know my couple, like the person who I believe is my twin flame or whatever, the sacred union partner, we've got so much in common that I cannot, I'm just going to tell you, we both have sun signs and Sag, we both have rising Leo, the only difference is our moon, mine is Capricorn, and, and this is regular, this is not the area, right, um, Capricorn and his is in Taurus. And then I, I read somewhere about, 
huh? That sounds great. That you sounds... must you must like the same foods and yeah. the same movies and the same. We know each or... other so badly, but that's why he can't see. He sees things in me that he that he doesn't like, but it's something that he needs to look at, not just mine. Well, I you know, you that... put your finger on a really interesting point because you know people are like, well, you got to be different or you got to be the same. Well, it depends on how the person feels about themselves. When that person sees your rising sign and sees how you're manifesting your sun through your rising sign, and they're not comfortable with the way they are, they're going to be annoyed by it. But with someone who is comfortable is going to be comfortable and feel like you're part of their family just from seeing it. So there is that aspect of astrology, too. Not everybody with the same sun moon and rising sign is going to get along or even sun moon or, or, or you know or yeah, two sometimes you would you would find things you don't like about yourself you know mirrored back to you but on the other hand you could be the best of friends yeah and on that unfortunately i'm going to have to wind this down because we're hitting the oh, yeah, end we, of the okay, show great. and i want to get thank a you so you. much for being it's here fine. thank you so much thank for being you. here monty thank and you. amy and give us thank your you, website Kathy. real quick Where's uh, your website, real quick? World. Thank you world. so com. much. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you.